Hey guys, welcome back to another code.org app lab tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can create and manipulate variables. So let's get started. Okay, um, to start off, uh, maybe I just want to explain a little bit of what a variable is. So a variable is kind of something similar to what you might use in a mathematics class. Or me, uh, later on, you may think of even a little bit more of how what a variable represents in a science class. We use a variable to store data or information, usually for the purposes of recalling that data or information, and or even modifying that information uh, a little bit later. So uh, let's get into this. Okay, so to create a variable. Uh, you can go down here to the purple section, variables. So before we use a variable, we want to declare or create the variable first. So that's done by say var x or some name of the variable, and then assigning it uh, a starting value. So maybe value is zero. Okay. Um, so once we have our variable created, we can then begin to use and modify it. Okay, so we can, just so that we can visually see what's happening, I'm going to add a text area for my variable. I'm just going to put some text in there so I remember it. So text variable underscore one. So this is going to be text variable underscore two. Good notification there, so we know what, what's going on. And just for starters, I'm going to just have this show the value of my variable in my code. Okay, so I'm going to add it to here. I'm going to set the text of variable one, two, I'm just going to repeat that one time. X ray underscore 2. Set that to X. Okay, let's see this in action first. Test it up. And it doesn't look like, yep, it is working. Okay, so 0 and 0. Right. Okay, let's reset that. Let's try that again. Okay, so every time I click on a button, that value should change to the value of x. Now, why does it change in the first place? Ah, okay, I know why. So this should actually be part of screen two. Two. And this should be underscore one. Okay, let's try that one more time. Run. Right. Okay, so sorry. Uh, so here we should have said when we go to screen one, change this text box in screen one to so change this text box to x. Like this one goes screen two, change the screen two variable variable box to x. Okay, now to make it a little bit more interesting, let's try changing the value as well. So I'm going to go back to variables, and I'm going to use this one, okay, we can see the help text says assign a variable. So we're going to assign the value of x to something. Okay, and I'm going to do that in both of these. And uh, just to start, I'm going to assign this to, I don't know, 8. And let's put this at uh, 15. Okay, so I'm going to run this. So you're going to hit next. So if I go to screen two, the value is eight, and that's correct. If I go back, I should expect the value of 15. All right, next, eight, back 15. Okay, that's looking good. Now, uh, one of the more useful things we're going to want to do, rather than giving it a pre-assigned value, is to actually update or modify the value based on what the 
pre-existing valley was. So that's a lot of English. Let's see this in action. So I'm rather than putting a straight valley there, I'm going to perform an addition operation here. And I'm also going to perform an addition operation here as well. Now over here, what I'm going to put here is x plus 1, x plus, uh, rather than doing 1, I'm going to put 3 here so we can see the differences. Uh, what this says is we need to evaluate what happens on the right-hand side of this equation first. So x plus 1, so that's the current value of x plus 1, and then we take that result and we assign it back to the variable x. Okay? The effect will be, let's just see this in action, if we go to screen 2, the value has increased by 1. Now, if it goes back, it's going to increase by 3. So the current value of x is now 1. If we add 3 to that, it'll be 4. So when we go back, it is 4. Okay. Now, if hit next, remember that when we go to screen 2, it only increases by 1. So that would be 5. When we go back, it increases that value further by 3. So we might call this a cumulative way or an ongoing way of increasing the value of x. Right, so increase it by 1, increase it by 3, increase it by 1, increase it by 3. Okay. Now, of course, we could change these numbers to be anything we like. We could increase that also by 1 as well. So each time we're actually counting how many times we're clicking on these buttons. So back, so 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Right? It also doesn't matter which order you put this in, so you can have the 1 here, you can also have the x here, but usually we write our notation as x equals to x plus 1. Okay? Let's just see it's in action one more time. Right, so that's 1, 2, 3. Right? So it doesn't matter which order you put it in. Okay? However, it has to be x equals first, then the part in orange. It doesn't matter which order you use. Right? Thank you guys for watching. We will look at server-side variables next time.